Selling food from home in California in 2022 has become a hugely popular side hustle business because the majority of the time you already have what you need to get started. So in this video, we're going to cover cottage food laws for California, their class A and class B license and explain what are these two and which one you should actually get if you want to make more money. We're going to dive into that right now. All right, guys, so welcome back to Marketing Food Online. It's Damian Roberti, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online, and I welcome you to my channel. If this is your first video, of course, as you know, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification to check out all of our food entrepreneur videos that we upload every single week. So before we dive into that, you wanna check below this box. We have a brand new program. It actually helps you to give us a super thanks, as it's known here on YouTube. Check out that feature down below. It has a little dollar icon. If this video was truly helpful, you can actually donate or give us a few bucks here or there, whatever you see fit, which actually helps us continue to keep the lights on and the videos made for you here on YouTube. So we definitely appreciate any support that you definitely give us as well. So I've got my laptop open, got a handful of great notes. I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step process to get your California cottage food business up and running. California actually, as a matter of fact, has one of the best cottage food laws in the entire country because of its two variations of licenses that we're going to cover in a second that give you a big wide variety of ways to actually sell your homemade food products which is pretty cool because a lot of states believe it or not that do have cottage food laws they actually have a very strict hold on what you can make how much you can make and so on and so on so california has two classes the class a cottage food operators license is the cheaper version doesn't cost as much as a class b but it actually allows you to sell directly to the person and online that you can also ship the products and use a third-party delivery service like a postmates by the way with that being said next thing you know check down below this video as well in the description section guys we have a whole bunch of additional resources if you want to create some fantastic online presence and sell your products uh, locally there is a fantastic resource below this video you definitely want to check that out as well now class b cfo so class b cottage food operators license this per permit is actually a little more expensive a little more costly and requires actually a home inspection but the thing with the class b license and the reason why i would recommend you get that is because it gives you an opportunity to sell your products directly to wholesale uh, restaurants um, you can also sell it to stores retail locations grocery stores as well that opens up a big big opportunity for you as a cottage food operator which most states actually don't allow you to do that now with that being said though there's a couple of things you need to know about the actual pricing or the amount of money that you can make the pricing for the different licenses vary about 100 to about 150 bucks but the benefit is Class A can sell up to $75,000 a year. Now, as a side hustle business to get started with, that's actually not bad money. Uh, this Class B CFO is actually $150,000. So you have an opportunity to more than double your sales by getting the Class B, and that's one of the reasons why I recommend you do that. Even though they're gonna have a inspection for your home kitchen, and of course, you're gonna have a little bit of a higher ticket price for the license itself, it's really not that big of a deal to transition to something that gives you much more opportunity and leeway, okay? Now, with that being said, also, you're probably wondering, Damien, what exactly and where can I sell my food products, not, not specifically just out to restaurants and things. So you can do it online through restaurants, retail stores, farmers markets as well, which are huge. California has one of the largest population of farmers markets in the entire country, by the way. Roadside, is, roadside stands. Um, and of course, keep in mind, you may have to have for some of those, you may have for like farmer's markets and roadside stands in the county, they may require a small license or a permit to operate the stand itself, but that really has nothing to do with the permit of class A or class B for your home. Now, one thing about farmer's markets you need to also keep in mind is when you go to them, normally they are not free. Now this has nothing to do with uh, cottage food operations or the laws in California on the cottage food business, but understand this, that is every farmer's market is owned privately and normally held privately. So if I, for instance, owned a farmer's market, I can charge you a fee. Now there's a couple of ways that this fee will work. In some cases, it could be just a flat, hey Damien, it's $100 for the weekend, or it could be, hey, it's $200 for the weekend and like 5% or 10% of your gross sales. Sometimes the farmer's markets will do that. So you gotta keep that in mind because 
as you set up your actual farmer's market stall or booth or tent or whatever it is that it's got set up, you want to make sure you factor that in as a cost, okay? So these costs can add up and they can take away from some of your profit uh, when it concerns farmer's markets or even roadside stands or different festivals or events, they all can charge you fees and it could be a percentage, it could be a set amount. So keep that in mind because you definitely want to tack that in as well. All right, so next up, one of the cool things about it is the amount of items in California as far as the types of foods that you can sell. There are a ton of, of states that have, of course, cottage food laws, but they are ridiculously limiting on what you can make. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with baked goods and some snacks and things and popcorn, but there's a lot more items that you can actually offer in California that's not something that you can usually do in other states. Things like bagels, cookies, rolls, tortillas, brownies, these are all basically baked goods in the first section here. Cakes and donuts, uh, you've got sweet breads, wedding cakes as well, um, breads, biscuits, and all these types of baked, baked good items. But keep in mind a couple of things. They do have certain ingredients that are not allowed. Those ingredients are things like cream cheese, uh, cheese fillings, meat fillings, proteins of that sort, fish and shrimp, seafood. These types of things are time and temperature sensitive, as they're known, and those are potentially hazardous food products, as they call them. So you want to make sure that you don't stuff any of your breads with all that kind of stuff, because if you don't keep it at a certain temperature and you're making these products, they have the potential to create bacteria. If they're sitting on a table at a farmer's market, obviously where there's no refrigeration or cooling, that's going to be a big problem. Somebody could get really, really super sick and they could shut you down or you could get fined and you just you could get sued even. Now, bringing up the lawsuit thing really quick, you may want to also, now this is not a necessity, this is not something that is required, but I highly recommend in all my videos that I talk about cottage food businesses when you're starting from home, they don't necessarily require business licenses in some cases, or they don't require incorporations like LLC, creating an LLC for your business, separating your liability is very important. I highly recommend you do that. I'm, I'm not an attorney or anything giving you that advice, but I've been in the food industry and I own my own business now for about 14 years. I know the importance of having an LLC and a food business insurance policy. One big misconception a lot of cottage food operators have is they think that their homeowner's insurance, if they're in their home, oh my, I have a homeowner's insurance, it's gonna cover my business. It doesn't, it does not. It's gonna cause you a big problem in a potential lawsuit where personally you could be held liable and you could lose your home and your car and everything else because lawsuits do happen and they could get out of control. So just wanna throw that out there. And if you're looking for a way to buy the way to create an LLC, uh, down below in the description section, there's some online resources that we offer too that'll help you create your LLC. Now, next up, what type of candy? So you could do brittles, cotton candies, which are hugely popular and ridiculously profitable. Cotton candy, by the way. Fudge, um, lollipops, chocolate. These are some candies that you can also do through your cottage food operation in California. Uh, condiments such as uh, nut butters, huge market for nut butters, especially ones that are made fresh and ground fresh and brought to farmers markets. Honeys, vinegars, mustards. These are the types of things that are extremely easy to make and made in bulk they're very cheap with huge profit margins that's one of the reasons why if you want to try out a food business doing it from home as a cottage food operator is one of the best ways to do it dry goods now this is really cool because not a lot of states allow this actually to happen or this type of product to be made but coffee coffee beans and spices and tea leaves mixes that are dry mixes dried fruits um, cereals dried vegetables pasta herbs these are huge market pro these these within the commercial realm of mass produced items things like spices is a multi-billion dollar business making some spices locally getting them into restaurants under your class b license getting spices and herbs or coffee beans if you have a way of roasting them or making them getting them into local coffee houses these are great ways because the class b license gives you so much flexibility that you can actually sell these types of items next up pastries so you can do danishes uh scones tamales empanadas but you can't put meat and cheese in those empanadas or tamales, any type of version of that. Pies, you can do as well, but again, you're limited to like a fruit pie, not a cream cheese or cheese filling or anything of that sort. Keep that in mind because you don't wanna make it and have it sit on your table trying to sell it to somebody and they get sick. Fruit butters, uh, preserved jams and jellies. Now snacks, this is a gigantic list. I'm not gonna go through the whole list, but each one of these actually has variations that you can make literally in the hundreds if you want, even maybe a thousand variations. But nuts and seeds, you can roast them and season them a whole bunch of different ways. Granola, that is gigantic. There's so many ways that you can make granola. Um, chocolate covered items like pretzels and that type of thing, marshmallows, uh, fruit leathers even, caramel corn, uh, pretzels and crackers as well, popcorn and vegetable chips. Now, some of the prohibited things. Now we talked about all the things that you can make money with, that sounds great. But Damien, what are some of the things that we can't actually make? Well, apple sauces, 
meat jerkies. Unfortunately, beef jerky, turkey jerky, whatever that may be that you're making or looking to make, you can't dry any meat proteins as under the cottage food, uh, unfortunately. Fermented foods, low acid canned foods, uh, just due to potential bacteria growth and that sort of thing. Ketchup, carbonated drinks, uh, chutneys and pickles, basically the items that would be fermented or have a certain pH level, not gonna happen under uh, cottage food laws in California. Now. Next up, what are some of the things that I can't do with the business side of it? So you gotta keep in mind, in your home, uh, if you have a class B and you're gonna get that inspection, you can't have children in the area where you're preparing the food items. And the reason why that is, is a lot of times kids run around the house and play and such, and maybe their hair's not covered or protected. There could be hair, there could be dirt, there could be something that could get into the food. If you're in your kitchen preparing your cottage foods to sell to people, you don't want a whole bunch of, of movement around because then the hair can fly up and get into people's food and such. Employees are restricted. So you're allowed to actually have, you can have a, um, uh, what they usually call, usually each state would allow only one employee. You can have a family member, if you have a family member who lives with you, working with you. But as far as hiring employees and having them come in and work a shift, that's something you can't do. So pets are also, you gotta keep in mind, pets can't be in the area that you're producing your cottage foods, because again, you don't want pets jumping up on the counter or hair flying in the air and such. Now, as I mentioned before, the class B is the way to go as well because you're gonna allow yourself to sell up to 150,000 a year. And you also are gonna do under the class A 75,000, which is quite a bit. Now, you also need to take you and uh, if you have any other your potential um, family members that are working for you, not necessarily employees and such, you gotta take a food safety training course that normally costs around $10 a year. And I believe it's good for about two or three years and you have to renew that. And as I mentioned before, home kitchen inspection. Class B license, a little more pricier, right? Bigger opportunities, you will have a kitchen inspection. Now, if you are on well water, or if you're not on the, basically the city water in a sense, if you're not familiar with this, but if you have a well that's on your property, you need to have the well water tested to ensure that it has no bacteria and that it's clean enough for you to clean and sanitize the different bake uh, equipment and pieces that you're gonna have, bowls and baking sheets and things. Anything that you're going to be cleaning, those baking uh, pans and baking sheets, you wanna make sure that they're clean so that water has to be definitely tested and checked out. So if you have that, you're gonna need to have a, a sewer or private water test as well. All right, so how do you label your actual product in California? So every state, even though they do have rules and regulations on what you can make, they also have rules on how to actually label your product. So let me walk you really quick. Number one, you're gonna have to have an allergen statement as well, an allergen warning on there. Uh, if the product contains, let's say, like milk or eggs or wheat or any type of peanuts or nuts or tree nuts, make sure you put that allergen on the actual label itself so the consumer knows that th that's actually something that could be potentially in there if they have allergies to it. Business address. This has to be, yes, <laughs> this has to be your actual home address. You can't use a P.O. box. Um, I don't believe any cottage food law, any state allows that, but you actually need to have just your address for your home. You can't have a commercial kitchen address or any of that sort or a neighbor's house. You gotta have the business address, the business name. So if it's, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Damien's Cake Company, I have to put on the label Damien's Cake Company. So the name of the company, not only the product, of the, of the name of the product, but the name of the company has to be on the label. Um, the county name. So if it's issued in a certain county, if it's Orange County in California, you need to have that on the label. You need to say issued um, in Orange County. Now, you're also gonna get a permit number. So the permit number, whatever that number may come, come to be, that has to be put on the label so they know also that that is within the county that you're actually doing that in. All right, next up, your ingredients, obviously, okay? But now when you do the ingredients, it needs to be listed from the most used ingredients down to the least used ingredients. So your label needs to entail all of the ingredients that are in the product itself. Next up is the product name, as I mentioned. So if it happens to be a vanilla cream cake or vanilla chocolate cake, whatever it may be, you need to make sure that it says vanilla cake on the label. Lastly, your net weight. Now, this is gonna to apply to items that have some type of weight. If it's trail mixes, granolas, spiced nuts, or even teas, you need to have it net weight. That is going to be the weight of the product, not the product and the packaging. You need to make sure you weigh that before you actually put this on the label so it's correct. If you're selling 16 ounces or one pound of trail mix, it needs to say net weight 16 ounces. So ensure that you're weighing the product before you actually package it. So all in all, that is what I've got. I'm gonna have a whole bunch of additional resources down below that, uh, that'll link you over to some great state websites as well if you need more additional help. 
if this video was helpful as all, well, definitely check out, like I said before, and thank you in advance. If you want to give us a super thanks, that's that button down below this video that has a little dollar sign. We appreciate any and all super thanks that we get because that helps us keep the lights on because it does actually cost us money to make and produce and edit and film these videos. So I'll see you guys on our next video. And if you need any additional help, check these videos out before you go. I'll see you on our next video.